How's it going troops, Jordan here back again with another Battlefield video and in today's video we are going to be talking about a brand new unverified leak in regards to this year's Battlefield game. Now this is kind of a spur of the moment recording so I don't have any notes with me but I'm going to try to get through this as best as. So in today's video we are going to be talking about like I say a brand new leak in regards to Battlefield 6, Battlefield, Battlefield 2021, whatever you want to call it. And I have to say that in this leak, there is a lot of detail, a lot of information, and it's pretty much like a whole essay, so we're going to get through this as best as. As always, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more Battlefield content. And without further ado, let's jump right in. So this comes from Reddit, and it's under the r slash gaming leaks and rumours. And this leak was posted by a user called Bob Loblaw. Bob Loblaw? Bob Loblaw? Bob Loblaw? Bob Loblaw? Yeah, Bob Loblaw, that's it. I'm pretty sure I've heard that name before somewhere. Can't remember though where. But anyway, this user has posted a huge chunk of information as you can see on screen. And without further ado, we're going to start reading this and we're going to get into the juicy details. So the title of this post is Battlefield 2021 Unverified Leak. Let me start by saying this. Take everything I say with a pinch of salt. Again guys, that is very important. Don't take all of this as fact. Don't take this as 100% confirmed. This is just a rumour, just a leak. And as the user has said, it is unverified as of now. Carrying on, he says, My source knows an insider at Dice LA who is involved with playtesting. My source has not seen or played the game. Now, I know that this sounds like my friend's uncle's cousin works at Nintendo, so take that as you will. I personally have no idea if what I am about to tell you guys is true, and I have no way of verifying it. Also, my source has never leaked anything to me before either, but I trust them and don't believe they have any reason to lie. We will know the truth once the game is officially revealed. Battlefield 2021 is indeed set in the 2030s, but that alone doesn't describe the setting well enough. The world is more or less destroyed by weather-altering technology and a second cold war between the US and Russia. You do play as soldiers from fallen nations like Tom Henderson claimed. These fallen nations are the primary setting of maps in the game. The setting of the maps will either have a war-torn, post-apocalyptic or destroyed by natural disasters slash reclaimed by nature look to them. Not all fallen nations have a map in the game. Each fallen country is allied to either US or Russia. Japan, South Korea and Israel are allied with the US. China and Iran are allied with Russia. My source insisted on this and says that Tom Henderson is wrong about this. The game will launch with 13 maps with an additional map set to release a month later. All of the maps are set in Eurasia, which for those who don't know, Eurasia is basically Central and East Europe, the Middle East and East Asia. Middle East and Europe are more heavily featured. None of the launch maps are set in North or South America, Africa and Russia. US and Russia don't fight directly against each other on any of the maps. Players can pick from a multitude of different factions from each side on each map. Not all factions will be available for each map though. All the maps are primarily designed around 128 player conquest. So just from that paragraph alone, we have a backstory and detail on the game setting. It's set in the 2030s, it's in the midst of a second cold war between the US and Russia. The game takes place in fallen nations and the maps are based on these as well, with each superpower using weather changing technology, which could explain why weather and natural disasters is going to be a big part of this game. And the thing that I find interesting is that this leak apparently goes against what Tom Henderson says. And me personally, I trust Tom and his word, so I'm a bit 50-50 on all this. Moving forward now to the gameplay leaks, which I know a lot of you want to know. It says here, there are no vehicle spawn screens, which means you now got to go into the vehicle to get it. So this is basically going to be like an old school battlefield approach like 1942. Hopefully this also means that jet runways are back, because I definitely miss them from Battlefield 3. It says you will automatically be switched to a vehicle specific class once you enter them. This does not apply to transport vehicles, so it seems like vehicle classes from Battlefield 1 are returning as well. Conquest is a bit different now, you still capture and defend points, drain tickets and spawn on your captured points. But there are a multitude of side objectives that pop up during the course of the match. These objectives pop up when a certain ticket count is reached, but they appear in a random order during each match. Multiple objectives appear at the same time. My source did not specify what all these objectives would be, but they were told about some of them. Completing these objectives gives you points and advantages. For example, there is a hacking objective where you hack a device and it reveals enemy player location on a big chunk of the map around that device. The enemy can disable and even destroy this objective. There is another objective where you capture intel from a designated location in enemy area and bring it back to a designated area near your flags. 
This intel will reveal information about how many enemy players are on each of the surrounding flags and which flags are marked for attack or defend. It will also give you a timer for when each vehicle will spawn on these flags. This is all timed. There is another objective where you get a flag, a literal flag, so not like an objective flag but more like capture the flag flag, and you can plant it in one of the multiple designated spots. This becomes a new mini conquest point for you where you can spawn on and it affects the ticket burn rate. The enemy has to capture it to make it disappear. There is another objective where you plant an explosive on an enemy conquest flag and it will temporarily make it disappear. This means that they can't spawn on it and it doesn't help them with ticket bleeds. The bomb site usually appears on enemy flags and the bomb is timed so the enemy can defuse it. This objective allows a few players to take over a capture point with many more players. There are more side objectives and they are supposed to make each round very dynamic. So it seems that on top of the main objectives with Conquest, Conquest has now been improved and features secondary objectives. Carrying on, it says here that Assault, Engineer, Support and Recon will all return as classes but each class will have multiple subclasses that will have different gadgets, perks and or guns. Not all the classes have the same number of subclasses. For example, Assault has two subclasses while Support has four. The subclasses each play different roles on the battlefield. According to this leak, DICE have tested 4 players, 5 players and 6 players squads. They have tested limiting squad spawning on squad leader only. The spawn screen will show the number of players on your team in each class and subclass. And they have tested putting a upper and lower limit on the number of players in each class. The attrition system and squad revives from Battlefield 5 are no more and are gone. And it says here that only medics can revive, which I'm assuming that medic is a subclass of assault. There is a defib charge up time before a revive like Battlefield 4, but you can't revive a player before this, and players will always be revived in 100% health. So it seems like there is a balance here with the medics. Back in Battlefield 4, you didn't have to charge up the defibs completely, which meant that yes you got less XP for doing it, but it meant for a quick revive for your teammate. However, reading the information here, it says here that you have to charge up the defibrillators completely in order to revive a player. And this will allow for all players to be revived at 100% health. So we're near the end now of this leak, and uh, I'm just going to carry on reading it here. It says here that squad spawn screen from Battlefield 4 makes a return, which is good. The game will feature weapons all the way back from the Cold War era to prototype weapons that are in development right now. So that's anywhere from the 1950s and 60s all the way to the 2030s, which could mean that a lot of weapons are going to be in this game. Speaking of weapons, it says here the game will feature powerful weapons and gadgets as battle pickups on the maps. They will always be in fixed locations on the maps too. And again, we've seen this with Battlefield 4, so this isn't nothing new and I am kind of glad that these things are returning. And the last bit of information it says here is in regards to Battle Royale, with the leak saying that the Battle Royale mode is being developed by DICE LA and is targeted for launch sometime in March 2022, with it being a free-to-play Battle Royale and tied to the main Battlefield game, just like how Warzone was tied to Modern Warfare. So troops, that is a lot of information to take in. Again, I don't know if this is completely true, even the leaker doesn't know if it's completely true or verified. So while this all does sound very detailed and very interesting, this could all be just complete bullshit. So just bear that in mind. But we don't have long to go now, because as of today it is the 26th of April, and we are 2-3 to three weeks away from the Battlefield trailer being dropped. It wouldn't surprise me if we started getting teasers this week. But uh, anyway troops, I just wanted to share this information with you, because you never know, this might all turn out to be true, it might turn out to be bogus, but I thought this was interesting to make a video on. So definitely let me know your thoughts on this information in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, then give the video a thumbs up, I would appreciate it a lot. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then why haven't you? Hit subscribe right now and also click the bell notification icon next to it, so that way you're always notified as to when I make an upload. And of course make sure to follow me on Twitter at JordanXBrooks for all the latest on there. So until the next video, I thank you all for watching, stay true to me troops, and I'll see you in game.